Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Marta aka Obscure Beauty and I can't thank you enough for paying me a visit today. I'm a part-time nurse and illustrator and my dream is to become a full-time artist. On this channel I want to guide you so you can avoid all my little mistakes and make your journey easier. I'll be talking serious business today to help you and me to succeed on this path of becoming a full-time artist or illustrator. So I hope you're ready <laughs> and if you think this is the kind of content that might help you in the future, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this video here. Right, as you might know, I quit drawing and painting about eight years ago and since then I tried to start again several times and failed miserably. The time I lost and the fact that I kept comparing myself to other artists just made me give up every single try. And in turn, giving up every single time made me feel like a failure and doubting myself even more. Which brings us to this episode, Dean. How do you deal with your self-doubt? I'll be giving you five tips on how to deal with this troublesome little voice in your head. So keep on watching and let's dive deep into our minds together. I consider myself... I consider myself a fairly resilient person. I mean, in the sense that I take the day-to-day -day stuff fairly well, with some grunting, sometimes clenched fists and a quick walk around the block. But art has been the only thing in my life capable of providing me with the highest highs on my mood and the lowest lows. And I'm not talking about mental health problems here at all, I just, you know, the normal highs and lows in mood. Art just affects me that deeply. Which means that when self-doubt plagues me, it's very capable of destroying years and years of progress and routine. And speaking about mental health, I did speak with a psychologist about self-doubt and the feeling of never being good enough at uh, one point. I saw him for a few months and found several things about myself that I didn't know before. And no, it didn't help me at that time, but maybe that was what made me come back now easier. Maybe I still needed that extra time to process all the information we disclosed together. So I guess that's like an extra bonus tip for today. If by any chance you think that there's something that, you know, something in you completely ruining your life and not letting you move forward, you should definitely speak with a professional that is trained to find it and help you sort it out. It's not really the cheapest thing to do, but we only have one life, so it's better to use it to the fullest and not being pulled back by some unsorted and shady past stuff that you don't know about. Anyways, moving forward, in this video I like to talk about some ways that I use to keep focus and not give any strength to my self-doubt, which I have plenty of. Never assume that you'll be super confident when your art improves because if you're anything like me, you won't even notice that you are improving, much less get confident about it. So there's always things to learn, I mean, just, there's no way. Anyway, starting. First, compare yourself only to yourself. This is a big one and I can't help myself sometimes. Every time I see other people's art, most of the time I want to be like them. I want to be able to do what they're capable of doing. Now, this can be used in my favor and in fact, I'm trying to use it to improve my own art. But more often than not, it just makes me doubt myself, which leads to me getting sad, frustrated and does that help me at all? No! Because no one ever said that being sad and frustrated will help you being productive and being productive is the key to improve your art and totally ignore that stupid voice that says that you're not good enough. And that's the deal. You can ignore, defeat it, absorb it, do whatever you want, but the voice needs to be silenced. And when you're being productive and focused on a drawing totally in the zone, you're definitely not listening to anything but your artistic intuition. And I find that the total opposite of that self-doubt. Artistic intuition leaves me feeling fulfilled, happy, feeling like I've achieved something. And that makes me want to do it again and again and get better. So, you can compare yourself to yourself in several ways, actually only two, uh, but one of the best being those social media posts comparing your art from your ex to your art now. Other way must be to just ignore art in general. 
but that might affect your improvement. I mean, I could eat art for breakfast. <laughs> it helps me look at amazing artists and their art and focus on the details that I want to be able to do myself rather than their age uh, and what they, they achieved already, you know, things like that. that. That's the things I do not want to focus on. Anyways, the second advice that I've already sort of mentioned actually, but it's to keep yourself busy with art. Honestly, if your mind is busy doing something that is challenging and, you know, it enjoys doing, you won't be hearing anything else against it. I mean, you can critique your own art, but if you can critique it, that also means that you have the tools to fix it. You can switch the canvas around, you know, get more references, you can work around the mistakes that you are critiquing. And that leads me actually to a third point and tip. There is nothing perfect. I believe this is one of those points that everyone knows, but almost no one actually abides by this common knowledge. It's, I mean, I got to a point that I'd never finish an artwork because I never felt it was perfect. Thing is, there's nothing perfect. <laughs> and more often than not, people do not crave perfect art. We as humans feel like we see a lot, but we're actually fairly limited and our heads fill in a lot of gaps. And our brains do enjoy a little challenge. I believe that the best artists out there are the ones who actually are able to discern which parts to detail versus the parts that, you know, the parts that need a lot of detail versus the part that doesn't need a lot of detail to make our brains think it's actually completely and perfect. So try not to be perfect. Just create art that fulfills you, that teaches you something and makes you feel nice at the end. And then publish it because why not? The fourth point might be uh, already, you know, might already require some courage from your part, but honestly, it means the world to me. Um, so seek either critique or other people's opinion on your art, usually meaning people close to you, like friends or family. And yes, I know, this requires you to step up and show people your art, but these are people that would never want to hurt you. Most of them are not artists either, so unless you want critique, They'll most often than not just say what they like and what they dislike. But I find that most friends and family are encouraging rather than crushing your ego straight on. So <laughs> right now I actually do appreciate some critique. Yes, that still stings sometimes when someone finds a mistake you feel you should have been able to spot earlier on. But I mean, how much better won't you feel after you actually sort it out and then publish it? I mean. That gives me a huge boost because I know that at least I fixed some mistakes that I didn't spot. So I definitely recommend, you know, to be in a Discord group or even an Instagram Instagram group or, or you know, just knowing a few people that will help you with your art journey. And I'll take this to the I'll take this point to ask you that if you like my art and you know uh, my these videos just join me on my Instagram and Twitter and I definitely don't mind being that person and giving my honest opinion on your art. Let's learn together! The links are down below on the description and I hope to see you out there. And the final tip is to that I have to give you is that you can't really force anyone to like your art so ultimately you just need to create it for yourself. And I know this sounds fishy and lame but it's the honest truth and something that really helps me in so many situations, even in commissions. Because if someone pays me for a commission, it's because they trust my sense of art. So as long as I create something that I'm proud of, more often than not, they are too. And if it's valid for commissions, then it's valid for everything else I create. Of course, I yearn for recognition as an artist. I mean, I believe everyone does, but in a sense, but... I always envied those who could create art to make themselves feel better and, you know, healthier. And I think those are actually the ones who get more value out of it. I do want to be able to live my life as a full-time artist because I love art. So there's no point whatsoever in making my life harder, losing myself in self-doubt, frustration and fears in general. Living life as an artist would be awesome because, you know, it would mean doing what I love to do and still make money out of it. And I did make a little video about several ways you can make money as an artist, so please check that one out if you want to have some ideas. Anyways, so these were my five tips to completely defeat and crush your self-doubt and su succeed as an artist. So you have no excuses now, get yourself to work and post it on social media and add me on there so I can share your art and we can grow together. 
Do you have any other tips on how to deal with self-doubt? Post them down below and let's start a little thread about that. And I hope to have helped you at least a little bit to succeed in your journey as an artist. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next week with another video to help you and me to become a full-time artist. Bye bye!